everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cannabis is Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing CBDV. If you're not familiar with me, uh, my name is Bonnie Goldstein, and I am a uh, California licensed physician. I uh, specialize in pediatrics, and for the last about 14 years, I've been involved in uh, pediatric cannabis specifically, uh, treating children with epilepsy, autism, as well as many adults over the years. Um, I've been involved with numerous uh, cannabis um, uh, nonprofits, as well as working on policy. And in 2020, uh, I published my book, Cannabis is Medicine, which is available on Amazon. Um, let's talk about the mechanisms of action. So what do we know so far about where CBDV works in uh, the brain and body. So as far as we can tell, it does not bind to cannabinoid receptors. Remember we have type one cannabinoid receptors and type two, although there was a mention in a 2007 study that potentially there was some binding to uh, the type two receptor, although it appears um, not to have been reported any other time. So I would say question mark there, as we may learn more as this particular compound is studied further. In terms of um, endocannabinoids, we know like CBD blocks the breakdown of one of your endocannabinoids, which is your inner cannabis-like compounds that help maintain homeostasis in your brain and body. Um, here, what we've learned is CBDV blocks uh, one of the enzymes involved in uh, the endocannabinoid 2AG in its synthesis. So that means that you, um, if you're blocking the enzyme that makes, helps to make 2AG, you don't make as much 2AG. We also know that CBDV interacts with what's called the trip channels. And these are involved in um, a lot of things in your body, a lot of physiologic um, mechanisms, including pain and inflammation, and in particular, CBDV activates uh, TRIP-V1, which is thought to be important for its anti-convulsive effects based on some research. It also activates two other TRIP channels, uh, and it also blocks a particular TRIP channel that's involved in cancer growth. The GPR-55 receptor I talk about in a couple other videos um, as a target of CBD, um, in that CBD is a um, blocks that uh, receptor, which then helps kind of block seizures. And so CBDV was found to also block this receptor, although in a weak way, uh, and it's involved in pain, inflammation, energy metabolism, again, in terms of seizure activity, which we'll be talking about a lot in this video, it appears that GPR 55 is one of the targets um, to help uh, decrease seizures. And then also uh, CBDV was found to um, uh, help with this phenomenon called GABA-A receptor rundown. And this is a phenomenon associated with drug-resistant epilepsy. Uh, and the way it's described is that when you um, go to activate GABA, the current that's sent from it starts to kind of run down or wear out which is not good when you're talking about epilepsy because GABA is one of the uh, neurotransmitters in your brain that helps to inhibit overexcitation. It's calming for the brain. So we certainly don't want GABA to not be working well, uh, especially in epilepsy. But it, this is the important part is here, CBDV helps recover that ability for GABA-A to work um, and to function to help reduce seizures or inhibit that excited brain. Now let's talk about the research. So there are multiple animal studies reporting the anticonvulsant effects of CBDV. There's also a case report in the literature of a young adult who was taking a homemade cannabis preparation, which when tested was found to be high in CBDV. And um, he was found to have significant improvement when he was taking this homemade preparation of cannabis, and um, it correlated, the CBDV levels in his blood correlated with these improvements in his uh, seizure frequency. So that's quite interesting. But remember, there were other cannabinoids in that uh, particular product as well, both THC and CBD were also present. 
Now, uh, in response to this, um, these findings that animals uh, get an anticonvulsant effect and a young adult out there getting an effect um, for anti-seizure, uh, a clinical trial was embarked on using a purified CBDV in adults with poorly controlled focal seizures. Uh, and it ended uh, because it failed to reach its primary endpoint. And there was a question of whether there was a placebo response. Did these patients uh, know what they were getting? But also it was a single compound, so a purified CBDV versus a botanical whole plant uh, product. And there's some evidence uh, in the literature that uh, has reported that whole plant product may give uh, better benefits at lower doses. So hard to know exactly why this clinical trial uh, failed. Um, now it's interesting, Rett syndrome, uh, which is a um, genetic disorder, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder uh, where the, uh, mostly in girls, uh, where they have uh, seizures and behavioral issues and intellectual disability. Uh, it's, it's a rare syndrome, uh, but I have uh, seen it in my practice. Um, this interesting study came out in 2018 looking at CBDV in a mouse model of Rett syndrome. And what they reported in their results was that uh, the mice who had this genetic uh, defect um, had, when given CBDV, had improved uh, general health. Uh, CBDV rescued the social deficit, so allowed these uh, mice to have more kind of more normal social uh, behavior, improved motor coordination, and also normalized the brain weight. So this is quite interesting because um, uh, what this led to was here a study in human children with Rett syndrome. And this comes out of Australia and was just published in December, 2021. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, it was published in March of 2022. Um, five girls with Rett syndrome and drug-resistant epilepsy, meaning no medication was able to eliminate their seizures. They were given a CBDV in a phase one trial looking at tolerability and safety. And they started dosing at 2.5 milligram per kilo per day up to and went up to 10 milligram per kilo per day and really remarkable results. Median reduction of seizures around 79% with three of the five girls having a greater than 75% reduction of seizures. And this corresponds to an overall seizure reduction from 32 seizures a month down to seven. That's quite amazing uh, for uh, these patients who are really struggling with ongoing seizures. And another great piece of information, CBDV was well tolerated with no serious side effects. The only two really that they reported were sedation and some drooling. And remember, these are children who are on other medications that are quite sedating. And so stacking CBDV on top certainly could make uh, the sedation a little bit worse. But um, when you're looking at medication for seizure disorders, many of them have terrible side effects. Uh, and sedation is considered one of the more acceptable side effects. Um, and here's another uh, report. This is again in animals. So cannabidivarin treatment ameliorates autism-like behaviors and restores hippocampal endocannabinoid system and glial, glial alterations induced by prenatal valproic acid exposure in rats. So what the heck does that mean? Okay, so when um, uh, rats are exposed to valproic acid, which is a seizure drug, also called Depakote or Depakine. When they are exposed to this prenatally, um, the, the mice, um, or, I'm sorry, the rats that are then born um, have uh, behaviors that are similar to the behaviors we see in uh, autism. And so this uh, research gave CBDV to these rats who were exposed to valproic acid prenatally. And they were looking at whether or not the CBDV would reverse the autism-like behavior, and also would it prevent the autism-like behavior. And so symptomatic rats, meaning the, the rats that already had uh, signs of autism, had recovery of social impairments, social novelty preference, short-term memory deficits, repetitive behavior, and hyperlocomotion, which um, 
um, means that all of these uh, various behavioral components improved with CBDV. And then in the mice um, that were exposed to the prenatal valproic acid who got CBDV right out of the gate before they showed any symptoms, CBDV prevented um, reduced sociability, social novelty deficit, short-term memory impairments, and hyperlocomotion. Very interesting. Um, that it may be preventive. They also found that the prenatal valproic acid exposure had significant effects when they looked at the, my, at the rats. Um, at, when they looked at their endocannabinoid system, they found that these animals had alterations within their endocannabinoid system, specifically increased number of type 1 receptors, some elevated um, uh, enzyme levels, and also um, lots of evidence of neuroinflammation. And all of these alterations were restored after CBDV treatment. Again, very, very interesting research um, and certainly promising. So then we have this research, so what do we do next? Well, uh, luckily we are starting to see some research in humans. So here's two um, trials. Unfortunately, one uh, was terminated because of COVID, just made it too difficult. So I'm hoping that maybe now that numbers of COVID are starting to go down, that we'll circle back and maybe try this again. But you can see here the title of one, Safety and Tolerability of Cannabidivarin in Children and Young Adults with Autism. And then here's another study uh, that looks like they are um, currently um, uh, working on, which was a is a phase two, 12-week, double-blind, randomized placebo-controlled trial of cannabidivarin versus placebo in children with autism with, um, I'm hoping, 100 participants. So it'd uh, be very nice to see the results of this particular study uh, because it does help us uh, to know which patients may respond, what are going to be the side effects, um, is this safe, and is it effective? Now, another report um, looked at neuropathic pain and CBDV. So actually, this was a patent. And so the patent was acquired, and I've listed it down here, so if you want to go look it up, you can. Um, it was acquired in 2018, and it tested CBDV as well as other cannabinoids, including CBD, CBG, THCV, and it looked at a mouse model of neuropathic pain, and they found that CBDV as well as CBG and THCV was effective at reducing pain and was even better than CBD for both what we call thermal hypoalgesia, which is where um, there's like over sensation of hot or cold that bothers you, and also what's called mechanical allodynia, which is when even just a light touch bothers you. If you know anybody with neuropathic pain or you have it yourself, even having like a sheet on your, like a, just a thin sheet in your bed on top of your feet can be very unpleasant sensation. That shouldn't hurt, right? And that's what mechanical allodynia is. So um, CBDV shows promise for neuropathic pain as well. And this is very exciting. Of course, it's in a patent, so it's not in a study, but um, the study was done, not published, but put in as part of the patent. And then there's another report here on CBDV on what's called Prader-Willi syndrome. Prader-Willi syndrome is a neuro neurodevelopmental disorder, and um, it's characterized by irritability and repetitive, repetitive destructive behaviors, disruptive behaviors, this intense, persistent hunger and food preoccupation. I, I even had a patient where the parents had to lock the refrigerator or the child would get in there nonstop and also some sleep disturbances. It's a very difficult condition because of the difficult behaviors. Um, and uh, it's also um, a lot of stress on the caregiver who's taking care of this child. Um, anyway, so uh, there's this new study that looks like they're recruiting uh, for the study. Uh, there's not much more information. It's out of a, a, a New York uh, Montefiore uh, Medical Center. 
And um, I read a little blurb on it. It says that CBDV may help these patients with mood, sleep, and uh, food regulation. I haven't really found any research to document CBDV helping with mood other than that interaction with GABA receptor. And maybe through that receptor, there's an enhancement of calm, less anxiety, um, and hopefully with sleep as well. And it's interesting, we'll be um, quite interested to see the results of this, but very exciting that we're doing research on some of these non-impairing um, minor cannabinoids uh, in humans. So again, very exciting uh, right now. So if you are a person looking for CBDV products, um, you definitely wanna look for something that's tested, that's whole plant CBDV, what I call full spectrum, meaning it has not been isolated. However, uh, currently, um, I have been helping some patients use CBDV, especially for seizures, and I'm seeing some very nice results uh, using the um, dosing from the study on the uh, Rett syndrome uh, patients in Australia. And currently what my patients are using is a CBDV isolate. I'm not a big fan of isolate, but remember these children are already on whole plant uh, products with CBD or THC or CBDA or CBG. And so by adding an isolate to those particular, to that, those particular regimens, they are still getting a whole plant um, response or a whole plant regimen. And so uh, in this particular case, I am um, okay using the isolate, especially since again, it's a full uh, spectrum regimen with all the terpenes and other cannabinoids. Uh, the only side effects uh, that I've seen so far is sedation. And again, in the RET study, drooling was reported as a side effect. I do want to point out that some products on the market have added ingredients like peppermint or other uh, compounds in there, which you may not want for epilepsy. Peppermint uh, can trigger seizures uh, in some uh, particular patients. Um, also, I don't like mixing a lot of other types of products in with the CBDB um, or even any other product like CBD or anything else, because when you're assessing to see if there's a response, it can be very difficult if something else is mixed in there and you get, let's say, a side effect and you don't know if it's from the actual cannabinoid um, or from this other ingredient. And I know you we could also talk about how, you know, it could be a terpene or it could be a flavonoid or something else in the cannabis, but when it's the whole plant cannabis in some type of oil, it's about all I really want in there. So I'm not a big fan of adding all kinds of other things into cannabis products. Um, all right, so that sums it up. And so if you're interested in learning more about cannabis medicine, uh, you can find my book, Cannabis is Medicine, at any of the links uh, below the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hope to see you at the next video. Bye-bye.